Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my full review on the Trevor Burger Customs L-E-X-K C-F-L. All right, what does that stand for? Well, I don't know. So I know the model he has is the E-X-K, I believe, and this is a larger version. So I would say L is for large, E-X-K, I'm not sure. CFL stands for, I believe, carbon fiber or carbon fiber frame lock CFL. Um, but I can't be certain of that either. Um, I just know it's called the LEXK CFL and it is a front flipper. Uh, what are we working with? Well, let's first talk about how I got this knife. So I had been hearing a lot about burgers recently and you know how it goes. It's just somehow a knife brand or a knife company or a model just keeps coming up and you're eventually like, all right, I gotta try one, right? And that's what happened with the burgers. Um, I kept hearing from a, a good buddy on Instagram, MB Wild, how great it was. And then the old man, uh, old man Bob Poncho on Instagram, that old bastard, um, sent me a video of his. He was holding his cane in one hand and he's flipping a Trevor burger on the other. And I'm like, damn, that old bastard really likes burgers, so I gotta try it. Um, and then I kept hearing from Jared Neves Knives and Stasa23, I had them on the live stream, and they were both flipping them and telling me how great they are. And I finally was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna get one. All right, they're expensive though. And I had to pick the right one. So I looked up the models, and it's a little confusing. The EXK, is a smaller version, I think 2.8 inch blade, something like that. Um, and then the LEXK is larger, 3.3 inch blade. Now he actually has the Atlas, which used to be his uh, flipper model, but now he has an Atlas front flipper, which as far as I can tell is the same size as the LEXK, but it just looks a little different. I think it's a little thinner overall. Uh, than this model, but it's still 3.4 inches or something on the blade. Very similar blade length. So, anyway, those are the main models that I know of, um, at least the front flippers. And then there's all different kinds from there. There's like the regular base ones, there's the plus ones, there's the liner lock ones, which might be the plus line is liner locks. Then there's the frame locks, the CFLs, and you get different inlays so they have this one's just like checkered carbon fiber he's done mammoth bone uh he's done D D damasteel or damascus inlay um then there's like full carbon fiber show sides with frame lock there's the full carbon fiber uh with liner lock just a lot of things going on here there's damasteel ones there's m390 ones and it seems like most recently he's going with lmax which I believe is just the steel right now that people are getting because I see a lot of companies using it, like Riot and now Trevor Burger. Um, so it's probably just the steel that's, you know, most widely available and maybe the best price right now. And I will say, to me, LMAX is basically equal to uh, M390. Uh, maybe it doesn't have as good of edge retention, but it's pretty goddamn close. And I, I have to say, I think LMAX has better uh, stain resistance because I've been having a lot of M390 rust on me and I haven't had it happen to any LMAX blades. So I don't know if that's coincidence or what. Uh, this here, to get into uh, the knife. Well, okay, so I bought it at African Custom Knives, uh, A-C-K, AfricanCustomKnives.com. Uh, I paid $860 for this, I believe. And I will say their customer service seems to be atrocious. Um, when I ordered this, their website said M390. Then I got it and the COA said LMAX. I contacted Trevor Berger, who, Trevor Berger's awesome. He got back to me quickly, let me know. It's gonna be LMAX, because that's what the card said, and that's what he's using right now. Um, so they had the wrong steel listed on the website. Is that a big deal? Well, I don't know. I would have been hesitant because I probably would have preferred M390, even though I just said what I said. But that's I've had that experience with 
LMAX versus M390 more recently because of this knife, because of the F5.5, because of uh, other knives. So anyway, I don't care about the steel difference, honestly. But what bothered me was that I emailed them two or three times at this point and asking them how, like, you know, is the, first I emailed them before Trevor and I asked, like, is it LMAX or M390? And if you have it wrong on your website, I want you to know so you could change it so nobody else buys stuff like that, right? Um, no response. Then I followed up, no response. Followed up again, I think, no response. So I haven't gotten a response once. Um, and I used the contact us button on the shop pay page or whatever. So a uh, Shopify page or whatever. So they got my emails or they're ignoring them or they just don't care. I don't know one way or the other. Uh, I would probably avoid African custom knives at this point because I don't trust them. So unless they, I hear back from them or something, I'm going to not buy from them again. Uh, so anyway, that's how I got the knife. It actually shipped quickly and I got it quickly. All that was great. It came with the little rhinoceros made out of like copper wire. My wife's loving that thing on her desk. Um, but again, after that, not so great. So, uh, aesthetically titanium with carbon fiber inlay, you have blue anno on the pivot collar and on the clip. Very nice. And then you have this hand satin with a full hollow grind starting at the spine. When you look at this in pictures and probably on camera, it looks like a full flat grind. It is not. The hollow starts at the top and keeps going. It is absolutely fantastic. I love the blade grind. I love this. I love the blade, guys. Overall, the aesthetic is gorgeous. I love a plain knife. And this is very simple yet unique and I love it. Uh, so aesthetically, it's a win. Very nice milling all over the titanium. And then you have that really nice blue clip. I love the little pop of color there with the blue. Uh, very simple. Uh, it is T6 hardware throughout. Pivots, clip, insert, everything is T6. Yeah, I wish it was T8, uh, but it's a custom and if something goes wrong, I know Trevor's going to stand behind it. So it's not really a big deal. Um, you just have to be careful. I will say I've taken this knife apart like 10 times. The tooling is fantastic. It really is. Um, I haven't had any issues with this hardware. And I've, like I said, taken it apart. Specifically, this screw and uh, these two screws over and over to get it apart because... I did a lot of bearing swaps, trying to get the best action until I realized that it's really just the lock bar pressure on this guy that's causing it to not drop shut, which that's really my only gripe with the knife. So actually, I will start off with action this time. Usually I wait, but um, the front flipper is extremely well made. Uh, it has good enough clearance to let you use it very easily but not too much that it looks kind of fugly, right? It's kind of reminiscent of the Shamwiri flipper tab or Shamwari flipper tab. Uh, South African design makes sense. So you get good grip right up here and you just bang it out. And it has a nice little ting sort of sound to it. Um, I don't know how to explain it other than it sounds like a custom knife. And that's what it is. Um, and then on the close, you can see, well, you can see the lock up here is very good. No issues. Not too early, not too late. You push the lock bar away, it drops down. So it's free falling when the lock bar is pushed out. Then it just takes a little shaking and it gets down. Um, it may break in a little bit better than this over time, but I've accepted it. And basically the the issue is the lock bar has pressure on it coming this way. And no matter what you do with the bearings, you know, or even the pivot, it's not going to drop shut unless that frame lock is pushed out of the way, uh, which obviously it's not when you're closing it like that. So left-handed, same thing, real easy to manipulate. Honestly, easier left-handed to flip because you don't have a lock bar over here to worry about. And then 
you know, very light shakes, very smooth. Uh, this is one of the smoothest knives I have. Uh, throughout, from open to close, close to open, there is no grit, no nothing. Um, it really is so freaking smooth. It's incredible. And the reason I'm accepting of the way that it doesn't drop shut, even though I've seen other people with burgers that do, um, is the detent. And you guys know I'm the detent diva. Listen to this. It just is fantastic. Sucks it in. Um, there's no shaking this thing out. Um, and when you go to flip it, it pops. Uh, it is fantastic. And um, yeah, so it's a pretty strong detent for a front flipper, for sure. And I really like that. So I wouldn't trade that for drop shut because I'm guessing the ones that drop shut have less of that frame lock pressure which means they're going to have probably a weaker detent. And I'd prefer to have the stronger detent. I can actually uh, middle finger flick this guy if I get down on the clip. I can flick it out. If you're right-handed, it will work without that. It'll be fantastic to just flick it out, which it's hard because I'm left-handed. There you go. Um, so action guys is phenomenal. I don't care about the not drop shut thing. I mean, obviously I care a little bit cause I'm talking about it, but um, I understand it and I appreciate it for what it is. And that is the only gripe I have with this knife guys. Um, and if, if you even want to call it a gripe because I like the fact that the detent is strong, uh, not strong, but you know, good. Uh, so anyway, ergonomics, man. This thing just fits like a glove into my hand. It is so comfortable. Um, there's jimping right here, but that's more there for the front flipper type thing, I think. I guess you could hold it back here. It's not very like, it's not very strong jimping or anything. It's pretty smooth. And then I usually hold it up here like this. Uh, feels fantastic. There's no choil or anything, but I'm pretty close to the blade already. And then I have good control of that fantastic blade. Um, the cutting guys is phenomenal. I can tell you it penetrates well because of the burger incident of 2021 when it went about this far into my hand, uh, because I tried carrying this lefty one time, literally one time, and I reached into a pair of scissors and it hurt. Uh, eh, it wasn't that bad, but it stabbed me. So I love this knife now. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, the cutting is at, it's absolutely sensational. It's thin behind the edge, has that ridiculous hollow grind. I hope you can see it from this angle. Um, ugh, God, it's so good, guys. It really is. As a knife, this thing is incredible, okay? And it's so comfortable in the hand uh, because of how you know neutral it is, yet it has the right swells in the right place, uh, at least for my hands. So it works great. Carry. It's fantastic. I mean, it doesn't go deep carry. You have this much sticking out, but it goes in pocket very easily. It comes out real easily. The clip is fantastic. Never had an issue with the carry. Um, sounds. I was talking about the Ting. Ah, sorry, it's hard to do on. There you go. Kind of makes this like crack out sound. Sucks it in. It's just in person it's phenomenal the sounds I, I would definitely give this an eight or nine out of ten um it just you have to hear it in person and the way it sucks that d10 in just has this click it's really really good uh it's tactile too uh so definitely an eight or a nine the tip looks like it goes out too far but it doesn't i mean you don't you can't get in there and touch it um so they just, they gave you enough blade length and they got it into this handle fantastically. And I love when you get good blade to handle ratio. Um, I think that covers all the normal uh, categories there. Aesthetics, ergos, action, carry, cutting, sounds. Yeah, value, uh, 860 bucks for this. I mean, it's a custom knife, guys. I, I don't think it's handmade. I mean... Cause he's definitely got to be using CNC, right? I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but regardless, um, if 
if Vero, not Vero's, if uh, Holt knives are going for the same price, I 100% understand why this is going for what it is. Made in South Africa by a South African. Um, it's exceptionally well made. Uh, the blade grind is ridiculous. It has a hand satin on it. Um, and the fit and finish is absolutely top notch. Uh, I really, I really can't say anything bad about this knife. The closest thing I can say is it's not dropping shut. And even for me, a guy who loves that is okay with it and loves this knife. This was in my top three of my three knives for life video. Uh, it was number three behind the Evo 2.0 and the Field Duty. And I would not change that pick. Uh, I really, really like this knife, guys. And uh, as a knife, it's fantastic. As a fidget toy, it's fantastic. Um, it just checks all the boxes for me. And even being left-handed, uh, I love it. I really do. So that is the Trevor Burger L-E-X-K CFL. Uh, so thank you guys. I love you all. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will catch you later.